There is an epidemic failure within the game to understand what is really happening. And this leads people who run Major League Baseball teams to misjudge their players and mismanage their teams. When we originally started the Columbia Society for Baseball Research, our first tagline on Facebook was, you do like the movie Moneyball. I think it's always been at the core of the club, um, the movie, and just the, like, just the movement in general. We're a small club um, that focuses on creating novel research on topics ranging from baseball analytics um, to baseball evaluation. And so it was really cool when I joined the club to actually be diving into those data sets that we found and like doing actual math and statistics on it was really cool to see the other end of you know those stats that come up on when you're watching sports. We started the club in, in 2019, my sophomore year in the spring semester as five people and, and it's grown significantly since then. We're now a club of um, more than 15. In the organization we have three different groups, research and development, uh, player eval, player evaluations, and baseball operations and we try to kind of model a front office I don't really see any of us as a as a Billy Bean or as uh, a Peter Brand in, in the movie. I, I kind of all, all of us just see, I see everyone as equals and, and those who want to get things done. I mean, we have some of the best ideas from some of the most inexperienced members. So I think that baseball is a sport that can really, really use some ideas from those who haven't been in the game as long. Yeah, so we um, published a paper about outfield positioning and optimizing where to put your outfielders on defense based on the hitter who's up. And I, I think... Um, it sounds like a pretty basic concept, but there were some few radical, I think, ideas that, you know, like a positionless outfield is something that we came up with through the paper that, you know, like a center fielder, or left fielder, or right fielder doesn't necessarily have to play the position that's listed in the lineup card that day, but instead you'd rather have your best outfielder um, based on speed and other things where the ball is most likely gonna be hit. And so I think that's like one of the more radical implications to what we've written. We made an optimization type of function. So um, the model internally will kind of shift these three circles that you have for the right fielder, center fielder, left fielder, um, and they'll move them around on the spray chart depending on if the batter up is a pull hitter, if they really like hit it evenly across the whole field, you know, you'll have your three fielders in very different positions. Um, so it's just kind of about maximizing where the fielders go depending on the batter, um, which is something that is definitely not new in baseball. Um, like the, you see a lot of the infield shift just in a normal game. <laughs> um, you're like, why is nobody on the entire right side of the field? Um, so it's just something that um, the outfielders hadn't seen as much um, because they have so much ground to cover. I don't think we're asking the right question. I think the question we should be asking is, do you believe in this thing or not? I do. Over the past 25 years, you've seen an evolution from scouts going to a stadium, bringing a stopwatch and their eyes, their mind, and maybe a radar gun to evaluate a pitcher. But now in 2021, you're seeing, even at the high school level, you're seeing all these different technologies that can, you know, understand how, how, how fast is that ball coming off a of bat? How much spin rate does that pitcher have? How fast are you getting from first to second without even using a stopwatch, right? So I think the technology boom in baseball has really encouraged a new level of analytics that wasn't there, where there wasn't a lot of technology. And while I think both segments of the game are really important, one, having a scout evaluate a swing or a delivery or how, how fast someone gets the ball and how, how good their throw is, it's also important to also view the, you know, the statistics of the game. We understand that and we try to like make the information digestible for a player because um, at the end of the day, we're talking about people's livelihoods, people's jobs. Right, and, and and people doing their job in a certain way. You know, tough transition, but I'm still I'm feeling starting to feel better with it. Yeah. yeah. What's your biggest fear? The baseball being hit in my general direction. <laughs> it was, it, it wasn't a career development move to start the club. To me, it was just you know, I I felt pretty isolated. I thought that you know I didn't know anybody that wanted to do the same things that I did, and. Um, that was hard, um, and I, I, you know, I think it was important to me to, to start a community of the people like that, and at the time I was extremely comfortable with that being like three or four of my friends, <laughs> and now I'm like even more happy that, that it's way more than that, and that there's more people into it, and, and I'm extremely, extremely ecstatic that, you know, we can play a role in 
people's career and, and make it a career development move for other people. I feel like I've become really good friends with a lot of people on the club, which is so nice because I, there are people who, like me, I'm a math major, they're like psych majors, poli sci majors. Um, so it's really cool how we all work on the one project together. And I think that's why like we had a lot of success with it because there were so many different viewpoints going into it, so. It's extremely impressive how quickly, and from what I've seen, and like how quickly people pick things up, even if it's not their specialty. Those are the people that that we, we are begging. If you have a some interest, but you don't really know how it works, you know, come on down, please, because I think we can fill in the gap.